What's good? This is Trey. Welcome to this presentation. Today I want to talk about, um, matter of fact, I want to share a quick story about, um, you know, kind of my journey in regards to cold approach. Okay. So cold approach is this idea of going out and approaching women that you don't know and being able to pick them up. Now, when I just started doing this, I sucked at it. Okay. Used to get rejected. I used to end up in some awkward situations. Um, you know, I had to deal with approach anxiety, fear of judgment, fear of looking stupid, all this stuff, man. And when I used to tell my friends that I was going out and approaching women, they would laugh and say, "Man, you're wasting your time, bro. You know, where's the girls at? You know, because I would obviously in the beginning I wasn't getting any results, so they'd ask me, "Yo, where?" Where are these girls that you're approaching? Like, what, what's up? Where's the, where's the numbers? Where's the dates, right? And of course, it was annoying, right? Because they're basically trying to make, you know, turn me into a clown or whatever and, and, and crack on me. But I went through that experience before, right? Because I went through the, uh, the journey of an entrepreneur prior to getting into cold approach pickup. Where, you know, I started trying to start little businesses. And I remember when I used to start those businesses, my friends and family used to kind of do the same thing. Clown me and say, oh, you're wasting your time, blah, blah, blah. But I was able to achieve some great success entrepreneurship-wise. So when I got into cold approach, I had this, you know, I remembered that. Like, okay, I'm doing cold approach now and it's the same shit. Okay, I'm starting this new thing and I'm not good at it. And so... You know, my, my friends and, you know, people around me are challenging and laughing at me and trying to clown me. However, I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I kept going out, kept approaching women, kept working on my game, my confidence, right? Working on my social skills, working on my ability to stay grounded in my masculinity when talking to women and my ability to lead all these different things. And I kept with it until I started to get good at it. Right, like I started to get some phone numbers, I started to get some dates, I started to get some results. However, I wasn't one to really show off and hey, I'm getting girls left and right. I never did that. I just kind of did my thing, right? <clears throat> so then fast forward to when uh basically, you know, I, I was staying in touch with some of my friends from high school and they were like, Hey man, we should uh take this trip to Miami, you know. Um, basically it was spring break and they were like, yeah, let's take this trip to Miami and let's, let's go and have a great time, man. Let's go and get some girls or whatever. Have a great time. And I was like, okay, cool. And, um, you know, so everyone was basically talking shit, you know, like, yo, I'm going to get the most girls, you know, uh, you know, this and that, you know, like it was, it was basically like a friendly competition and it was cool. But, but most of the guys who were going on this trip, they didn't know that I was actually, you know, succeeding with cold approach, right? I was, I figured out how to go out and approach women and pick them up and get numbers and dates and get a girlfriend and stuff like that. Like I developed a skill that most people don't have, but they, they weren't aware that at the level that I was at with it in the sense that I was actually getting results because I'm not one to show off and flex, right? So they're like, yeah, you know, and they, they knew me as, as the shy trade that wasn't really getting girls. So they're thinking, like, I'm coming on this trip that they're going to basically, you know, um, show me up, like, make me look bad or whatever because they think they're going to get all the girls and I'm not going to get shit. But I'm, I already know what I know. And so I'm just like, yeah, let's do the trip, man. Okay. And at the time, I didn't really have much money. So I wasn't able going to be able to, like, uh, match anybody money-wise because I guess the reason they were suggesting the trip is because everyone had their money together and stuff like that. At the time, I guess I, I was coming out of some weird situation, so I didn't really have a ton of money. But one thing I knew for a fact was I had game. I had the ability to go out and approach women and project a, an attractive personality and pick them up. And you don't need money for that, right? So I, I, I wasn't worried about the money. So I was like, okay, let's go on a trip. So we go on a trip and, and we're all talking shit. Yeah, I'm gonna get the most girls or whatever, right? So we go on a trip and, you know, the first night we uh, we get there and we're like, okay, we're going to just chill tonight. And um, so the next day we're like, okay, we're going to go to the beach. Okay. And basically on the beach, Miami Beach, <clears throat> ton of women everywhere, right? Because it's spring break. 
ton of women and there's a ton of guys too, but obviously we're focused on the women, so awesome, right? So we get we get to the beach and um we're like, okay, cool. So we're just gonna vibe out, we're gonna have a great time. So uh one of my boys he had like a speaker, you know, like a portable speaker, so he carried the speaker. And basically we went on the beach and we had the speaker and we put on the music and we basically created like this this vibe where everyone was dancing and having a great time or whatever, right? So this, all we did was just have a great time on the beach, right? Um, we weren't really talking about the competition, like who's gonna get the most girls, whatever. We just had a great time. So to me, that was like a warm up. That first day was a warm up, okay? So, you know, it was a great day, whatever. Nobody really focused on getting any girls. We just had a good time. So we went back home and then the next day, is when the, 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 the competition talks started coming in. Like, oh, what's up, yo? Let, let, let's see who's gonna get the most girls or whatever. We started going into that like, okay, all right. So this time when we go to the beach, we're gonna see who can get numbers and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool. So we go to the beach again. And, and this time uh, we split up, right? Like instead of like all of us going to the beach and dancing with the music, uh, we just split up and we're all doing our own thing, right? And we were supposed to meet back up, but me, you know, I knew like, okay, this is my opportunity to show these guys. Because these are the guys that in high school were kind of like, you know, trying to make jokes about me, like not really getting girls and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, this is my opportunity to show these guys what's up, you know, because they're thinking, oh, it's the same trade that doesn't know what to do with women and shit like that. So we're on the beach <clears throat> and we split up or whatever. So I just start going after it, like approaching women, you know, having these great conversations, but I understand logistics. So one thing I understood was, okay, it's great to approach women and stuff like that, but you know, you want to actually like have, um, like somewhere to bring them, right? Like if you're approaching women and you just stay in the same location, it's like nothing's going to happen. So we, we had an Airbnb, like me and my boys, we all had an Airbnb. So what I did was I was approaching these women but I wasn't like approaching them like thirsty and shit like that. I was telling them, look, um, we actually have an Airbnb and we're throwing an uh, after party. Okay. Now we weren't really, it's not like we organized an after party, but I just understood, okay, if I go up to a certain amount of women and I'm inviting them out to an after party, it can actually become a, a, a after party because if I, you know, if a lot of women show up or whatever, it would be a vibe. And then obviously there's a couple of my boys that would be there. So it would basically be like after party. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm approaching these women, but I'm running games. So basically I'm creating connections with them. So if we end up meeting up later, it won't be awkward or anything like that. I'll actually know who they are. And we had some conversations, stuff like that. So I'm creating these connections. I'm vibing, I'm checking the vibes. You know, obviously I know who's interested and who's not. Cause obviously if you, if you approach a certain amount of women, like over a period of time, you start to very easily, you can cut like feel out the vibes and know who's in, who's in and who's, you know, out, like who's into it and who's not into it. So I was going through talking to different women. All right. Getting lots of numbers like this to me that day was when I've approached the most women in my life, I believe, because <laughs> there's just so many on the beach. Like there's just all over the place and there's a lot of attractive women. So it was, it was like uh, anyone who is good at cold approach that would to me that would be like paradise basically because it's just they're everywhere okay so all you got to do is just execute or take action so that's what i was doing i was getting these numbers and um so at some point we meet up like i, I run back uh meet back up with my friends or whatever and i don't really tell them anything like i don't tell them that i just got a ton of numbers and instagrams and snapchats and shit i, I don't say nothing and so we're just vibing and, and they're like, yeah, man, where you been? And I was like, oh, you know, I was just saying what's up to people, you know, meeting people, having a good time. Right. So they're like, yeah, man. So let's let's. So then we end up like uh, I think they, they had the speaker. So we ended up bringing out the speaker again and dancing or whatever. And then we leave. So when we leave, I'm like, yo, did y'all get any numbers or anything? They're like, uh, you know, maybe one or two or whatever. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool. Well, uh. You know, I actually, um, you know, I got some numbers or whatever. And so, but, but I didn't, I didn't go into any detail. Now, one of the, one of the dudes that was there was the dude that I was the coolest with. So I let him know, like, 
I was like, hey, bro, like, I got like a you know a good amount of numbers, and I met some girls on the beach, so I think I can actually pull some of them back to the Airbnb, and we can have like an after party. So, <clears throat> so he's like, oh, for real? And may, I think he may have he was maybe wasn't too sure, but he does he doesn't he did have an idea that I do go out and approach women and stuff. So he kind of was like, oh yeah, he, he's probably not bullshitting. So I showed him, and he was like, oh shit, like I showed him the numbers and shit like that, and the girls I was texting and shit. So, so we go back to the Airbnb and I start texting these girls, hitting them up. And, um, uh, basically, uh, some of them start responding like, yeah, where's the Airbnb? We'd love to come back. We'd love to, you know, vibe, party, whatever. And so I'm like, yo, looks like they about to show up for real. So I tell, I tell, uh, the boy, the, the dude that I'm cool with, I was like, yo, I think these girls are really going to come through. You know what I mean? And he, he starts looking at the phone. And he's like, oh, shit. So he starts texting them, too. I give him my phone because I'm like, fuck, I don't care. So he starts texting them, too, like, hey, you guys really coming, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah. So basically, these girls end up coming over, and they're pretty much all attractive. And the the, the other guys, so the other guys, they're, like, kind of blown away because they're thinking, they're thinking that I don't, they didn't know that I have, you know, this ability to go out and, approach women and actually create connections and actually create enough interest where they would actually show up. They didn't expect that. So when it happened, they're kind of like, oh shit, you know, these girls actually showed up. And so they basically like folded, like they got, you know, they got, when a girl showed up, they basically like, you know, whatever game they supposedly had, it just went down the drain. And so, but my, my game didn't go down the drain. I capitalized on the opportunity. Now I understand we're in, we're in Miami, this is spring break. These girls are here to have fun. So I'm having fun. I, I basically, out of the, I think there was like, what, four girls? So out of the four girls, I had, you know, chose one girl that I was just going to vibe with. And I ended up vibing with that girl and having an amazing night with that girl. Whereas uh, one of my friends, the one that I'm cool with, he also got, you know, there was a girl that he had a great night with as well. But the other guys... They didn't get anything, right? Like, they were over there making excuses. Oh, the girls have boyfriends, blah, 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 which was all bullshit. They just didn't know what to do. They were too um, shook because they couldn't believe that me, out of all the, the people in the group, because I was known as, I used to be known as the, the shy dude. I used to be known as the dude who was all about basketball, but he would never talk about girls, right? So they, they were in shock. Right, their, their nervous system couldn't handle the situation, so they just they just folded, and basically, um, they had to like after that night, they basically had to like <laughs> give me my respect. Like they're like, "Yo, Trey, I gotta give you your respect, man. Like you, you got these girls to come over, and they were actually really attractive, and they were good vibes or whatever, and we dropped the ball and blah blah." Like basically, I earned my respect, um, you know, from. Being the guy that, you know, the, the shy guy and then being slept on and laughed at and clown like, oh, you know, Trey doesn't know how to get no girls, blah, blah, blah. And now us going on a trip, you know, get uh, me being the guy who actually pulls the girls back to our crib and, and uh, basically we're able to have like a little after party and, and me having, you know, me being able to choose pretty much the, the best, in, in my opinion, the best looking girl out of the group. And, you know, me vibing with her, okay? And these guys basically, you know, fumbled or whatever and didn't, you know, so, somehow figured out how to turn the girls off or whatever. So they ended up leaving. But basically the point I'm making here is... It's like this zero to hero story. Like I was literally the guy who, you know, couldn't talk to girls. And I ended up being the guy who was able to pull the girls from the, the beach, get them to drive all the way to our Airbnb. That's a point I forgot to mention. They had to drive like an hour to get to our Airbnb. So obviously I must have communicated in, in a way that must have been really attractive to them because they decided to drive a whole hour. And these are attractive women, so it's not like they don't have any options. Right? They could have probably hanged out with some other guys or whatever, but they decided to come and hang out 
with me and my boys because of my communication because they didn't even get to see my boys. I was the one who approached them because I had split up from my boys on the beach. I approached, approached these girls and got their interest and got them to come over. And I mean, to be honest with you, like I, I was able to seal the deal, okay, if you know what I mean. And one of my other boys who I'm the coolest with, he was able to seal the deal. But the other two who were talking the most shit, or was it two? Yeah, the other two who were talking the most shit, they dropped the ball. You see what I'm saying? And these girls were all interested or else they wouldn't have showed up. So, you know, any excuse they came up with, she had a boyfriend or just got out of a relationship or whatever. Bro, she's on vacation in Miami for spring break. She pulls up. They pull up to some guy's house um, like that that they don't really know. And they just show up like late at night, bro. Obviously, they're, they're there to have a good time. So I, I wasn't trying to hear no bullshit excuse. But what I liked is that they gave me my respect. Like after the girls left and everything was over, they're like, yo, bro, respect, man. Like we didn't know you had that in you or whatever. And I was like, to me, it was no big deal because I've, when you go out and approach lots of women, you kind of become desensitized to, to it. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it becomes no more of a big deal. So to me, it was like, of course, right? Like, of course, I go to Miami, a situation where there's a ton of women. Of course, I'm going to be able to get some women because I'm able to do it uh, I'm in Orlando, Florida, when it's not uh, it's not as active as Miami. Um, you know what I mean? And Miami Beach on spring break like that, that shit is crazy. So actually, I can't wait to go back, to be honest with you. Hopefully, I can do it next year or some shit, but... Yeah, so that's the thing, man. It's like that, and this is just one story I wanted to share. But like, there's diff I have different stories like this where it's like, you know, being slept on or being laughed at or being clowned because people think one thing and then you prove them, you prove them wrong. You know, like I've done that with basketball. I've done that with entrepreneurship. I've done that in regards to women. You know, and it's just it's an amazing thing when you're able to go through that that process because in the beginning, when you're starting something new. You're going to suck at it and people are going to try to clown you and make fun of you and make you feel stupid and, you know, tell you, oh, why are you wasting your time? Shit like that. But then when you go through it and you actually get good at it, then all of a sudden now, yeah, respect, man. Yeah, man, you're the greatest. Yeah, man. you da, 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 da. And now they want to hang out with you because, they, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So it's just, it's interesting. But I mean, that's how it goes. And, and I like it. I like that it's like that because it's like, okay. Yeah, look who's laughing. You know, when they start, they were laughing at you in the beginning, and now in the end, you get to laugh at them. Like, I would, that, that shit was so funny to me when those girls came over and these guys were like clueless. They didn't know what to do. Like, you know what I mean? And it was just, man. <laughs> but, man, great stories, man. Great stories. So, that's, that's the thing about being able to go out and approach women and stuff like that, because you can create stories like this, create experiences like this. You know what I mean? Like, and you can keep keep creating them. So like there, yeah, this happened in the past, but as I said, you know, I'm looking forward to going back to Miami next year and, and creating another experience like this or something, you know, maybe something a little different, right? Because there's been a lot of evolution since then, but it's just it's just cool to have this ability where you're not relying on luck, you're not relying on hoping shit to happen. You're able to actually be proactive and make shit happen. Right? Cause I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys on that beach. And I, I, I would be willing to bet that the majority of them weren't able to capitalize on that situation as far as there's all these beautiful women that are in Miami on spring break. They're there to have a good time. But like guys, you know, if guys are like awkward and nervous and unsure and timid and shit like that. These girls aren't going to go with those guys. They're going to go with the guys who are confident, who can walk up to them with some confidence, with some balls, with some, you know what I mean? Some grounded masculinity and, and tell them what's up and lead. Like, I walked up to these girls and I was like, yo, you know, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, um, you know, enjoying the spring break, blah, 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 blah. We have an Airbnb. We're throwing an uh, after party. I don't know if y'all be down to go or whatever, right? And just vibe on that topic. And, you know, I'm not, like, thirsty, like, hey, I think you're so fine, blah, blah, blah. You know, no no need to say that, right? They obviously look fine. They're in their, they're on a the beach. They're in a bikini, right? They don't need to make them uncomfortable. Just calibrate the, the communication, you know? So I understood, okay, obviously these girls, they, they, they look, they know they look good. They know they're in a bikini, right? And I'm, I'm where I have a, I have my tank top on. So I'm, I'm, you know, 
I'm using what I got too. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not like uh, unaware that I have, a, you know, I've worked on my physique. That's another thing. It's like you got to be smart about things. Like if you can, if you can create a physique that looks good, if you can get things in your favor, get them in your favor. Okay, like. I knew, I knew I was going to Miami. I'm like, okay, I'll make sure that my physique is in the best shape it can be. But don't get it twisted. You can, Just because you have a great physique doesn't mean women will necessarily be interested in you. You still need to be able to talk, right? You still need to be able to, like, carry yourself with, you know, with some confidence and some grounded masculinity. Because if you look good but you can't communicate or you lacking self-esteem or you're insecure these girls aren't gonna trust you they're not gonna feel safe around you right that's why guys they always like trying to get the girl super drunk or super high because they don't want her to notice that she's making a mistake <laughs> you know but you don't want to be that guy that like you can't get a girl unless she's like super under under the influence or like she can't um think straight or whatever like because now you're limiting your options you know what i mean you want to be the type of guy who can meet women any time of the day. Like most of the time I meet women in the daytime, you know, not in the clubs, not in the, you know, I can meet women in the clubs and stuff. That's great. But I rather, I much rather meet a woman when she is sober and in her right state of mind so we can create a real connection. And so that's the power of cold approach pickup is being able to communicate in an attractive way with women that you don't even know. These women are not in my social circle. These aren't women that I've known before. These are women that I just met. So that's the power of code approach, man. So I just wanted to share that story real quick. Um, if you're not in the Unbreakable Beach Tribe, you're missing out in that group. I've been giving away all my experiences, all my tips, all my advice in regards to code approach, in regards to becoming more grounded in your masculinity, in regards to eliminating your fear of approaching women and developing unbreakable self-confidence. So if you're interested, I'll drop a link to the group and I'll see you inside. Peace.